just yours. Okay, good morning. Can everybody hear me with the microphone? Back row? Okay, great. Um, yeah, good morning and welcome to a brand new series of talks I'm going to give this year. Um, it's the 20 minute sessions. So I submitted this as a 60 minutes talk and it got shrunk down to 20. Actually, it's 15 only today, as I just learned, because we have some Q&As at the end. So let's get started. Um, I'm Kyle, working for Cloudera. I'm going to tell you a couple of things at the very end about what Cloudera does in this context of Hadoop. And this talk is about software and a little bit of hardware around the Hadoop ecosystem. So a quick poll, who has never touched any Hadoop yet? Oh, that's a lot, that's cool. So you're on the right talk. Um, so Hadoop is the big data Apache solution and it's about hardware, which might look like this, like in my um, office room. So you collect a bunch of machines which all have local disks, local CPU, local memory. So you don't have the separation of here's some storage, here's some blades. So we have computers that have all hardware, local disks, memory, and a CPU. And you collect like seven like I have, or you might run uh, hundreds or thousands of those nodes. But the overall idea is always the same, and they all run the same hardware, uh, the same software on top of whatever hardware you're using. So. Let's talk about the components in the Hadoop ecosystem. And I collected like the, the 10 most important tools and there's many, many more and every other quarter there's a new tool coming up um, to do another new important and cool thing. But let's look at the most important things. And since it's only 20 minutes, I have a very small number of slides. So I have this progressing slide which kind of builds um, um, with the distributed file system of, system of Hadoop. So again, so the Hadoop cluster consists of multiple machines, each with a local disk. So you just stick them together with some piece of software and you get like a software networked RAID 10 system. Think of this as what HDFS is, the Hadoop distributed file system. So we store our data in various places and we store it in multiple places. So even if a machine dies, the data is still somewhere else, so we're not losing data. So this is how the distributed file system works. That's like the location where the data physically is. And since we can use hundreds or thousands of machines, we can store petabytes of data. So we are not bounded by um, the data size. So we can store any amount of data. So that's the idea of HDFS, our first major component. This is where we physically store our data. Um, storing the data is one thing, but we also need to access the data. Yeah? If I just want to store data, I could buy a big SAN and put the data on that. Um, but I need to have something else. I want to process the data. I want to run reports. I want to filter the data. I want to search for data. So what I need is a processing layer. And now I do something important, um, which is the, the key of Hadoop. Since I have these independent computers, so I store the data redundantly on the many machines, and since every machine has local processing power, we have CPUs and memory on each machine, I can distribute my logic, my processing, my query on all of these nodes and tell each node, you work on the data that is stored on your box. You do that over here, you do that over there. So we have a distributed processing um, engine called MapReduce. Yeah, it's derived from functional programming, so we are writing a map method and a reduce method. And it turns out that this very simple approach of these two functions, map and reduce, um, can solve a lot of complicated problems. Yeah, so a lot of problems can be broken down into map methods and reduce methods. So a lot of computer science can be applied to solve real-world problems. Um, so how do I implement those things. So Hadoop, which usually is these two components. So the core of Hadoop is the distributed file system, HDFS, and the distributed processing layer, MapReduce. They come with plenty of Java APIs. Yeah, there's um, methods to store data, to put data, or get data back. There's methods to run queries and fetch results. Um, if you're not into Java, you are going to um, hate it. 
Yeah, so you're going to hate this API. I hated it because I didn't know much Java when I started looking at Hadoop. Um, so it takes a while to, to understand all these functional um, programming ideas, but eventually you get going. So, but this is the core of Hadoop. So these two components with all the Java APIs. Um, but sometimes you don't want to run Java classes and compile them and run unit tests just to get a simple report done. So what if you are familiar with SQL? Um, that's what happened at Facebook. Facebook is a big SQL company. So they knew SQL, and when they started using Hadoop, they created a translator called Hive. And Hive takes an SQL query, your select statements that can contain joins, subqueries, aggregates, filters, and so on. And Hive translates this into a Java MapReduce job which then runs on your cluster in parallel. So you get um, a parallel SQL engine for pretty much free. So that is Hive. Um, people at Yahoo thought the same. So let's write something that has a simple input, like a scripting language, and write a translator that translates the scripting language into a Java MapReduce job. And that's what they call PIG. So they implemented this translator and the scripting language called PIG Latin. Um, and that's um, another system that translates a higher language into these low-level functional programming designs. So think of it as a compiler. So barely people will write assembler code or C code. So people would write scripting languages on top because it's easier and rapid prototyping is a lot more fun than debugging these low-level languages. So that's the, the idea. Um, another item that fits on this layer is Mahout, which is a machine learning library on top of MapReduce. So if you ever have seen um, recommendation systems on Amazon and Apple and eBay and other recommendation systems, um, that's um, possible with um, these high-level um, libraries. Okay, so this is what you can put on the top end of MapReduce. So we can have easier to use languages that can be translated into low-level Java MapReduce jobs. And then those things run our, on our cluster and we get the results from these um, scripts or queries. Okay, so let's look at the bottom end. How do I get data into my distributed file system? Very often I have some data already sitting somewhere and I want to um, import it into my Hadoop cluster. So what I could do is use a tool called Scoop to transfer data that might be sitting in a relation database, like my Oracle database, my MySQL database, and so on. And Scoop can connect to these existing data sources and load the data into HDFS. Yeah, and we can do incremental imports, we can actually also do exports, so data that my, let's say, Hive job created, I could export into a MySQL database. Yeah, and that's the beauty of all that. So all these tools work together. Yeah? And actually I'm able to live without Java at all. So I can import my data from a MySQL database um, into HFS, write a Hive query or a PIG script to work on that data, and the output, I could export back into my MySQL database. Yeah. So imagine you're running a web application which stores all the transactional data in a MySQL database. You load things into HDFS, you run a Hive job once a day, once a week, and the results you're putting back into your online um, transaction web store. So that might be a possible workflow, which is very common. So that is Scoop. Um, Scoop, by the way, not only can talk to relational databases, there's a lot of connectors into um, data warehouses, so Scoop is like this import-export um, layer to interact with HFS. Um, where else could you have data? Um, you could run an army of web servers, mail servers, that create log files. Yeah? And your log files are sitting on various servers. And instead of writing your own scripts wrapped around um, rsync and SCP, you could use a tool called Flume, which can collect events from various sources, like log files, um, Twitter feeds, so you can listen to a Twitter feed and import that into HFS. 
Yeah, so as soon as there's something new, as soon as there's new events, Flume can pick those up and store them in HFS. Yeah? Tweets, um, IRC channels, so you can listen to IRC channels and collect the messages that people are changing, uh, sending. Listen to your SMTP mail servers, and so on. So you can um, collect events from various sources, load them in HFS, do some reports again, and that completes that um, flow. Okay, so there's one more spot that is missing, um, and I have to cover that quickly. Um, it's HBase, so even that could be a talk for an hour easily by itself. Um, HBase is um, a distributed key value store. Yeah, so we were talking NoSQL all week last year at this conference. So HBase is the low latency random access key value store in the HBase and the Hadoop ecosystem. So you can store key value stores across all the nodes in the cluster and access them at low latency. Yeah, so we're talking milliseconds here. Um, and the data is stored distributedly. Yeah, and you can modify those records. Um, and this is what HBase does. Um, it utilizes a lot of memory on these nodes, so we can get those um, quick access times. And we use the scalability of the Hadoop cluster, so we can store a lot of data in HBase. Um, and HBase comes with a lot of APIs, again, with the Java API. There's a Hive interface, so you can run SQL queries against that key value store. So a lot of things in Hadoop just work together pretty well. Okay, the slide is almost full, and we're almost done. There's a couple of more tools in the ecosystem, and like I said, there's more tools being added, like every quarter, I would say. Um, two tools um, that I want to talk about quickly is um, Uzi, for one thing. Um, Uzi is like a cron machine for Hadoop. So if you want to run certain Hive jobs, pick scripts, scoop import exports at certain times, you can use Uzi as a scheduler to do that. Uzi is also able to monitor certain directories in your distributed file system, and as soon as new data shows up, because somebody put some new data into it, we can launch some jobs to run reports. So think of Uzi as cron for Hadoop. Um, and then we have Weir. Weir is a deployment tool that allows you to quickly set up a cluster, let's say on an Amazon Cloud instance. Yeah? So in five minutes you can rent 20 machines on Amazon and deploy a Hadoop cluster. Yeah? So this is what Weir does. Okay, one more slide, and then we have some more time for um, Q&A. Um, like with Linux, for example, you don't want to install the Linux kernel yourself and then put um, user land tools on top and maybe graphical tools on top of that. Um, you're going to use a distribution, right? So I stopped compiling my own Linux kernel many, many years ago, um, and I just use distributions like, let's say, Red Hat's distribution. And like Red Hat is putting together distributions for commercial and for community um, users. Um, Cloudera, the company I work for, does the same, and we provide a fine distribution called CDH, Cloudera's distribution, including Hadoop, which includes all of the tools I just mentioned and some more, and we maintain that as a community edition, so it's free. Um, you can download it. It comes as tarballs. Um, we get virtual machines, so it's really, really easy to just play with it. If you don't like it, just throw away the virtual machine image, and you didn't mess up your, your machine. Um, so I invite everybody to go to our web page, um, get the, the, the virtual machine, and play with it. Um, just out of curiosity, is anybody using CDH in some way? Okay. Um, so some people are using it. Um, again, so it's free. Get it. Play with it. If you have questions, um, send me an email, which is going to be um, available on the, on the Billion Buzzwords website. And that's all I have to say in 50 minutes. So, thanks for that. If there's questions, there's one microphone. I think there's another one. So, raise your hands and the microphone comes to you. And Thank you, Kai. There's one question. So, CDH4 is currently uh, in beta. Do you know when it's going to uh, go out of beta? Um, if I would know, I couldn't tell you, um, but it's soon. Yeah. Who 
Um, where do you normally find your bottlenecks with, uh, with your hardware? Um, yeah, the hardware could be bottlenecked in various places. So network is a very common thing. Um, so people sometimes very often only have one switch. So that if that switch fails, we have a well, single point of failure. But the network also is um, a performance bottleneck because sometimes people only have a um, 10 or 100 gigabit, uh, megabit Ethernet network. So that might be a bottleneck. Um, but then just use your um, standard monitoring tools to find out if your disks are not fast enough. Um, common reason or common, common thing to do is um, you should use more faster disks instead of less bigger disks. Um, so that's one thing that, that I see quite often. Um, but again, so network usually is the, 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 the most common bottleneck. Usually it's not the CPU, it's not the memory. We have time for one more question. One Are there more any question. more questions? Your chance. Okay. Yeah, there's one more, fourth row. Oh, I see. Otherwise, I'm here all day and tomorrow as well, so grab me and ask anything you want. Yeah, so uh, I've, I've, I have uh, like encountered problems when I'm trying to access uh, DFS from, uh, from standard Hadoop library instead of using Cloud Eras. And what did you change? Are there major changes? And I'm asking what did you change on Hadoop and DFS and all of that. So you have problems accessing the, the file system layer? Yeah, so what, I, what, I, what I'm saying is that if you use the standard Hadoop jars, right, they don't work with Cloudera's distribution. Well, we base everything on the, the, the Apache releases, and we backport some, some um, additional fixes, but it's really the Apache mm -hmm. libraries we're using. So, so that might be probably some bugs, because we don't do anything magic. Um, outside of uh, the Apache software. Oh, OK, I see. Yeah. Okay, thank you. OK. All right, let's thank the speaker again. OK, thanks a lot again.